Well, welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zaratustra, and the topic of today is free will is a hoax. Free will is an illusion. Um, we're going to do a meditation uh, as, as usual to get grounded and to get centered and we get in touch with the center of ourselves, discovering the Buddha within. And then after that, uh, we move on with our topic. Um, for those of you who are newcomers, as uh, I mentioned, we have to mute everybody because of the background noise. And, uh, but you're welcome to either write on the chat box um, your question, or if you want to connect with me, and I'll or unmute yourself and ask me a question um, or wave at me, I will unmute you. So we have various ways to connect with each other. Um, for the moment is what we're gonna do is we are going to divert our attention inwards. And one of the most simple ways of meditation is by bringing our attention to the source of our thoughts. If you make this as a practice on a regular basis and bringing your attention, this is not a mental exercise. This is not like thinking of trying to figure something out. This is actually the other way around. This stops uh, mental activities, which is very, very vital at this time uh, in our evolution and the time we live in. is like when you're just in a very simple way without putting effort into it, without any struggle, because I have to explain to you that meditation is a very natural thing that happens to us. And meditation is not something you do. Uh, meditation is something that happens naturally. So a forced meditation doesn't have any values. Uh, the best way of, there's many different uh, scenarios of meditations, but one of the most simple ways of meditation is simply by diverting our attention towards where the thoughts come. What's there before you think? Where do your thoughts rise from? And if you dig deep and take a look, almost immediately your mind goes into silence. If you look within and look for what's before the thoughts arise and you bring your attention to that place, almost immediately, you, you become quiet. Now, it may not last very long. Another thought may come, but you hit a place that you are absolutely silent and quiet. So go ahead and do that and bring your attention inwards towards the source of your thoughts. And take a deep breath and relax. And just simply bring your attention to this place. Without any effort, trying very hard to make things something happen. We don't want to force anything. It's just an allowance and it's a shift of the attention. You're shifting your attention from one place to another place. Normally our attention is on trying not to think. We're not doing that. We're not trying not to think. 
we're also not trying to visualize something. I know some of you do that, trying to visualize something, light or a crystal. I'm asking you right now, don't even try that. And some people bring their attention on their breath. If it works for you, that's fine. But if it doesn't, you don't even need to try that. All you do is simply you bring your attention towards the source of your thoughts. Where do your thoughts come from? What's there before you think? You're just shifting your attention to that place. That's all is needed. Simply relax in this moment. But just being normal, natural. You allow your feelings, your sensations, your body do its thing. We're not trying to manipulate anything. We're simply bringing our attention to the source of our thoughts. What's there before you think? You bring your attention to that place. And the mind becomes absolutely still and quiet.
as you're just simply being here now in a relaxed state. I would like you to visualize that you're in the middle of the ocean. It's a nice sunny day. You're on a boat. You're in your bathing suit. It's not too hot, but you're feeling the sunshine, the rays on your skin, on your face. In the meantime, there's a cool breeze moving on. The water is turquoise blue. It's like Caribbean or Mediterranean, beautiful crystal clear water. You can see deep inside the ocean. You can see the fish, the coral. It's a very, very clear water. Pristine, clean, turquoise water all over. It's a very calm day. You feel very calm, blessed. You are on a long-term vacation. You have nowhere to go, no appointments. Nobody to see, no bills to pay, no business to attend. You're in a deep, relaxed state. You're very happy that you have nowhere to go and nothing to do. Suddenly, you feel and find yourself at the presence of a great being. A gigantic being full of light, love, begin to appear around you, in front of you, it surrounds you. It's pure love and light. The being is immensely, immensely large. Very gentle and very loving. You feel you are at the bosoms of Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul. Her own Majesty, the Supreme Spirit, Lord God, has appeared in front of you and is holding you. You've never felt this connected, this much connection before 
you've never felt so protected. Nothing can harm you. Nothing can worry you. Nothing has the power to disturb your equilibrium. The love, the silence, the comfort that you experience. This love and this light, like a thick honey, a thick liquid form begins to penetrate inside your body. Starting from tip of your toes, and the tip of your fingers, on your hands, you begin to feel a strong energy force filled with love and light and comfort in a, like a thick liquid, honey, sweet, is entering into your body. And slowly, slowly moving on and taking over. Drop by drop is filling up your body. You feel no resistance towards it. You know in your heart that this is the essence of your own purity. You know in your heart that you are getting filled up with Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul is entering into your body. Purifying every cell transforming every atom of your existence, remaking and changing you to a new you. Liquidifying you into liquid crystals, liquid light. As your body is transforming, it's becoming etheric, it's becoming pure energy. You are ascending and transforming to a higher realm you're entering into a fifth dimension into a unified field of oneness into a unified field of love As you're entering into this realm, you begin to lose your identity. The 
their identity as a person, someone separated from the world surrounding him, surrounding her. You are losing that identity. It's kind of fading away. Even fading away from your memory. It feels like a distant, far away place that once upon a time you were living at and the memory of it is fading away. The new information is so great, so wonderful. The new way, so supreme of entering into this fifth dimensional realm of the being. Finding yourself completely connected to the network of intelligence. No longer experiencing being separated from anything. Everything is a part of yourself. Everything is you. You are everything. Nothing is out of alignment. Nothing needs to be different. Nothing needs to change. Everything is exactly the way it's supposed to be. You are in a complete alignment with everything simultaneously. As this liquid, thick, light, love, divine energy is taken all over you, the energy is moving, connecting itself from your feet to the hands, to your body, going up through your spine, spiraling gently going upwards, connecting every chakra of your body to the other. Strong, gentle, powerful, kind, clear, full of love, full of light. This energy has filled you up and has come to your heart chakra. You feel that your heart chakra, your heart has burst open as if someone has cut through your chest with a sledgehammer and your chest has opened up and love, light, liquid, crystal, crystalline of love and light is flowing through of your body. Information is going back and forth. There is no pain. As if your body has given way happily for this metamorphosis to take place, to this change to take place. Nothing is wrong. It's all happening naturally. Nothing is lost. 
everything's gained. You're happy. You have a big smile on your face. You're rapidly dissolving into the oneness. You're rapidly losing the sense of separation of an individual helpless, lost into complete connection. Divine intelligence is flowing through your body, through your veins, through your chakras. Waves of waves of intelligence, information traveling through restructuring you in the cellular memory. Codes being activated, information. Moment by moment, you remember your mission, your destiny. Moment by moment, you remember more and more of everything from the past, everything from the future, everything merging into this pure light. By this moment, the fluid has taken over and it's moving from your throat chakra into your head and it's reaching your third eye. You feel the intensity and the pressure of this emergence. What used to be your body is shaking but it's shaking in a good way. It's the vibration of joy, of happiness, of oneness, of, of no desire, all desires falling away. You're coming into the realm of no desire, complete surrender, and 100% gratitude of the being. By now, the liquid has taken over your head and it's piercing through your crown chakra. As this emergence taking place, you begin to lose all senses of a physical form of a person who ever been separated from the oneness. Everything is rapidly merging into the one. And as this is taking place, you're beginning to re remember that you have never been separated from this state that you're in. You're beginning to remember that you were always here, a part of the one. It was all in your imagination. You had imagined that you were a person separated from who you are, the source. It was a play, it was joyful, painful, dramatic. You enjoyed it then, imagining a world of separation. And now you're very happy to remember again the truth of who we are, the truth of who you are, who we are. 
pure presence. Presence only. Pure presence. Always here. Always present. It's never been born. It can never die. Always here. Beyond forms, beyond limitations, beyond time and space. No borders. Always here, always now. By this point, light is the only thing you see. Your body has dissolved. You no longer have a body. Once you had imagined you had it, it's gone. Yet you're here. in complete harmony, balance. Still and silent. In a new way of being that thoughts don't, don't exist. It's only presence. You're remembering what it's like to live in a dimension that thoughts don't exist. Your true nature, your original state. As your attention is focused on one point, which is light, you are completely, utterly suspended in the space. Lost at last. but here and now.
Remember who you are. Who are you when you are not thinking? Who am I when I'm not thinking? Slowly, slowly. Your consciousness begins to remember that you have left a body in the third dimension. And gently you're re-entering into this body from your crown chakra. <clears throat> However, you're coming back to this character in this movie called My Life to continue playing your role as one of the characters But you do remember your origin now. You know who you are. Yet you know you're playing a role. So slowly, slowly come back. Come back into reemerge. And fall into from here, just dive back into this body. Now regarding the topic of the day, the illusion of free will. I know this is going to trigger a lot of people and I'm curious to find out how many 
Facebook messages I'm going to get or Instagram or on my website, emails are going to be coming up. Um, in my, I always share it with uh, my audience that everything I share and I teach, it's coming from my own direct experience. I can't teach or share anything that I've read or heard from other people that is not my own direct experience. And there's a lot of concepts and different things that they sound really good, but in my realization, I discovered that there is no free will. And I'm going to tell you why. There is no free will is because I can't find an individual entity out of the seven or eight billion people that are apparently on this planet. I cannot find one individual entity being separated from the source. And I've looked around and I can't find one. And what I discovered that there is only one will and that will operates through every single individual human being or, or entity that appears to be separated, but it's being operated through one supreme soul. That's my experience. That's my finding. Now, I have no intention in convincing anybody to believe what I say or to live their lives the way I do. So I've never tried to persuade anyone and I still don't. It's just a matter of sharing my direct experience. If somebody's interested, I would speak more. But I have no intention in trying to talk anyone into it, to look at it this way or believe it or not. I have nothing to gain or lose from it. But this is my direct experience. Thank God there is no human being who have their own free wills. So in that, in that realization, coming to this point, and in the beginning, of course, the mind wants to go crazy. The mind's going to come with all kinds of questions, all kinds of resistance, all kinds of different tantrum will throw at you. What do you mean I don't have any free will? What do you mean... There is no free will. I can choose to pick this cup and drink it, and I can put it back on. I can choose to watch a movie or not. I can, I can do this, I can do that, blah, 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 blah. But fortunately, it's all an illusion. None of it has anything to do with our free will. Thank God. And the more you begin to recognize this, the more you start to see it. Because we have a very strong tendency to only pay attention to the very small part of our lives that when we will something and we think we're willing it and that thing goes in our way and 
So if I make an investment in somewhere and I make money out of it and everything went my way and I keep saying, look at me, look at me, I'm so smart. And it was from my own will and thoughts and intelligence. But I don't look at how many more other times in life I try to make something happen and it failed. Or I try to go in this direction and I ended up being here. I've talked to so many different people that they told me they never intended to be married. They never intended to have kids. They wanted to go travel the world and they ended up getting married or ended up having children and they ended up living in one place and never traveled. I've talked to so many people. I've observed many, many people, including myself, so many times, really wanting to go somewhere and then ending up somewhere else. And it's interesting because we don't pay any attention to that of how many times that things may not go our way and we disregard that completely. It's a part of our nature and we're only looking at the parts that things go our way. And then when things go our way, that's my doing. The ego wants to come and say, I, I did it. It's my free will. Part of this realization for me came from having five near-death experiences. Five times coming very, very, very close to the end game. And somehow, magically, through the grace, all five times in the very, very last moment, I was spared. And when you have five near-death experiences, car accidents, that the car rolls down the hill seven times, or you're in the ocean and you're almost drowned, and in the last moment they pull you out magically. Or you're in a political prison being tortured, and in the last, you're supposed to be executed. And in the last moment, somehow magically, you're free to go. You have things like this happen to you. You begin to notice that something much greater than what appears to be is at work. Something far more intelligent, more mighty, more powerful. Something's at work here. Some greater intelligence is turning this planet around itself, turning this planet around the sun. Some greater intelligence makes every season come after the other. Winter turns to spring, spring to summer makes day come to night and night to day. Some greater intelligence is operating this body. It's running my digestive system. It's running my respiratory system. It's operating when I'm sleeping. Some intelligence is running the show. It makes things come together and makes things fall apart. Some greater intelligence was running the show before I was born and after I die. What is it that's been operating millions, billions of human beings being born, being fed, being taken care of? And then when their time's over and they leave, and another new, new group come, 
what is it that feeds all animals around the world? What is it that feeds every single vegetation? Something here is at work. The presence, I call it, the spirit. And when you come in touch with that, you cannot choose to come in touch with it. You cannot choose that I want God in my life. As you look around, millions of people, millions and millions, billions, are very occupied with being somebody and making it in the world. Majority of people on this planet, their focus is on making more money, buying more real estate, acquiring more wealth, following their desires, things of that, that nature. And a small percentage of people in the world, their attention has gone towards the spirit. And... God realization, self-realization is the number one priority, priority. And the world and worldly desires, they come second or third. If Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul, does not come to your life and doesn't touch you, doesn't open the curtain and shows herself to you, you would never know it exists. As you can see, a lot of us are surrounded by a lot of worldly people who, when you talk about the idea of presence, God, the Spirit, they laugh at you, they ridicule you, They think you're stupid or foolish or woo-woo because they haven't been touched by the spirit. And you can't choose on your own that I want the spirit to show up in my life. It's the grace that chooses to touch us and shows, show her presence in our life. And when grace shows her presence to, our, to us, it's like, as Ramana Maharshi mentioned, your head is in the jaws of the Bengali tiger. So the tiger is going to eat you. When you come across and the grace touches you, you become like an addict. You're addicted to the, to the love of God. You want more and more and more. And you can't, it's worse than being a heroin addict. The love of God is way more powerful than any kind of human addiction. Because you don't stop at any point. You want more. It is a fire that consumes you. It's like a moth flying around the fire. You know, you have a light or you have fire and the moth starts flying around it. And they don't stop till they're consumed and they're burned by the fire. Finally, they will fly into it. And they get burned. And they get consumed. And it's the same thing with the love of God. When it touches you and enter in your life, you're done. Then it's just a matter of time before you're completely consumed by it and you lose yourself into the love of God.
But when you do come across and you're touched by the grace, the grace touches you. You begin to see the presence in your life very strongly. And as the presence becomes more apparent, surrender begins to take place. Hold on a moment, I just need to redo my Instagram. It just ended and I'm just gonna play it again. Please, one moment. When the grace comes in, as grace, it shows its presence more and more in your life. You begin to see that every time that you are stuck somewhere and you think all doors have closed and there's nowhere to go, but you notice the presence Somehow, in a magical way, you can call it miracle, a door opens up, a new way shows itself, a new idea comes, and the means come for you to make it. And the more you begin to notice this relationship, this connection, the more you begin to surrender Surrender to the grace. And the more you progress, the more gratitude takes place, more gratitude comes. And things start to get easier because you're seeing the connection. And the deeper you go in your spiritual practice, the deeper becomes the illumination. The illumination of the I thought, the illumination of a person who appears to be separated from the source. A person who appears to have their own free will. That illusion that's so strong and so embedded, it's got such a strong grip on us that you are an individual separated from the source, capable of making your own decisions, having your own free will, that person begins to dissolve and slowly, slowly disappear. And as this transition begins to take place, the illumination, grace, in the meantime, appears and keep reappearing on your way. It can come in a form of a guru, and other teacher, it can come in forms of messages, appearances, dreams, books, guides, different ways. It keep reassuring you that you're on the right path. And what appears to be you, really? Because the whole process is all guided and already on a script. And as you attention gets forced on this process to disconnect with what it appears to be in the other world, is the attention starts to be turning inwards. And a lot of times this process 
begins by a simple question. Something happens in our lives. We have a traumatic experience, maybe a life-threatening experience of almost dying or someone close to us is gone or we lose everything. We lose our, we'll go to major divorce, breakups, loss of money, company, whatever, or accident. A shock treatment most of the time. And it forces you to question. It forces you to question, which is the main question is coming up. Who am I? Who am I? What am I doing on this planet? Where am I going to go after this? What is the meaning of this? Why the world is so cruel? What's going to happen to me after I die? Why am I struggling? Why so much suffering on this planet? Why am I suffering? Many, many different questions of this nature will come, will rise. But everything leads us into a shift in the tension of going deeper inside, of looking inwards in search of finding some answers. And in this search, in this investigation, many different things begin to appear. As we surrender deeper, as we're more in this state of gratitude, surrendering the illusory free will to the will of God, the illusory free will of this recognition that the living being, the spirit is in everything and everyone. It's so apparent that there is no single entity in the universe capable of its own independence because everything has the spirit in it. Everything has the spirit in it. And everything is an expression of the absolute. There is no single thing that is not an expression of the one. And you quite often hear from spiritual people and people around you, or you may have even said it many times, oh, it's all one, it's all one. Well, if it's all one, then there is no other. Oh, yeah, but you know what? We're all one, but we're also co-creators. And we're co-creating with God. Well, where were you 100 years ago when God was creating things? Who was co-creating with God then? You've only been here for a few years. Well, God was really waiting for you to come because he needed your help. He's done a shitty job all this time and he was just waiting for you to come and co-create with him. (laughs) You see God in everything, everything, including coronavirus, everything you start seeing god in everything very quickly your fear and worry is going to disappear because who are you going to be afraid of because there's the recognition of 
the oneness, the recognition that you are, all of it you're perceiving, everything you're hearing, seeing, in contact with, is all your own self. All of it is yourself. It's one self appearing to be many. One self appearing, appear to be many, many different ones coming from one. Images, only images. It's like when you put light towards a disco ball. I don't know if you've noticed it. As soon as you turn it on, you put light towards the disco ball and the disco ball is turning, you're going to see thousands of stars, little images of light all over and it's turning and it looks very beautiful. But it's all coming from one disco ball. All of those shadows, those lights you're seeing, traveling around, turning around, they're only images of the disco ball. This body-mind mechanisms that they come to this world and they live a period of life, they've all been giving a script in this movie called The World, called My Life. Characters that come and play their role. And everyone, according to script, has a duration and a mission. We all come and play our role, and then our role is over. And then at the end of the day, the movie ends. The lights in the movie theater come on, and then the audience gets up and goes home. And that's exactly what is happening right now. So there's nothing to be afraid of and there's nothing to worry about. Yet we continue doing what we have to do, be responsible and take care of what we have to take care of. But in truth, we know that we were neither born nor going to die simply playing our roles in this movie while it lasts. And everything is in very, very good hands. All is well. Her Majesty, the Supreme Being, knows exactly what she's doing. Okay, we have about 15 minutes left. Anybody has any questions, you're welcome to connect. Let me check the message. We got a lot of messages here. Uh, Uh, anybody has any questions, feel free either wave at me or. Hi, okay. Hi, Candice. Good morning or whatever time it is for you. Yeah, where, where are you? I'm in Oregon, but I'm going to, I'm in transition to move to Hawaii if I could just get there. 
Okay. All right. Nice to see you. Nice seeing you too. Is this your first time joining us? No, I've been to the Conscious Life Expo and I saw you there. Okay. And that was um that was huge for my life. I I went to your class course there because um it was an accident and it was meant to be. I lost the paper of where I was supposed to be. And okay. Best experience I've ever had in my life. Thank you. Are oh, you welcome? Um which one did you come to? Do you remember the title of it? Was it Thank the workshop? You. I love you. Or... I love everybody. And it was, <laughs> I sobbed through the whole thing. I cried through the whole thing. And it burst out my heart, just like you said, with cutting your heart open and the sun comes out. It, that's how I felt that day. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. It's nice meeting you. I'm so happy that that um, existence brought us together. Thank you. And I brought yeah. a friend. I brought a friend today named Francella, and she's a nurse. So we needed you today. Everything you said was profound. So thank you. Well, you're welcome. Um, remember the truth of who you are that you have God in you and the living spirit is here. And the moment our attention comes back to the being, the moment we take, we divert our attention inwards towards the source of our thoughts, the mind becomes quiet. And as the mind becomes quiet, the heart opens and love appears again bliss takes over and some people think that at this in this time we have to worry we have to be in fear we have to be in anxiety and if we are not doing that then we're not good citizens or we're betraying other people or endangering other people by recognizing the truth of who we are, by recognizing love is here, fear disappears, worry disappears. That's by being happy, that's not an indication of being irresponsible or disrespectful to other people. A lot of people, they have a hard time recognizing that that there must be something wrong with you because you're really happy, Zarathustra. Why are you happy? Why are you smiling? I'm happy and I'm smiling is because I feel the presence of God in my heart very strongly. And I just can't at times not laugh or smile. And knowing deep in my heart that all is well in the core of the my myself in the core of existence yes in the apparent world the planet is going through turmoil but this is also part of god's will it's not an accident what is happening because of whatever, I can never see the grand plan because I don't have that vision. I can only see life from a very small perspective because I only see this period of time or whatever years I've been on this planet, that's all I can see. I can't see the big picture. Only the Supreme Being can see the big picture. So, but I can trust from personal experience. I trust that whenever anything happens, like what's going on today in the world, 
when you are really connected and you know everything is the source everything is the self everything's god then you trust and you surrender to what is and what is happening your trust and you surrender to it and you're not resisting it well, what i'm saying is i'm not talking about being reckless and not taking care of one's needs or being ignorant to other people around us that's not what i'm referring to what i'm referring to is our inner attitude when you really see the presence into everything in the fabric of universe that there is the living source the living spirit running the show so you surrender to that and in that surrender in that connection the living spirit is protecting you and carrying you at all times through whatever happens because of your connect connection that you're connected and no fear anxiety nothing can penetrate maybe the fear the thought appears or you can help it not to experience the collective anxiety sometimes maybe you feel it but it's not yours because you're sensitive you're empathic you can sense things but that's not yours you feel it you're sensitive you adjust accordingly to what is going on because you're not an idiot you're not a zombie you're highly alert spiritual conscious being completely connected but you're still you operate from stillness you're not operating from a chaotic mind your responses to what is happening in life coming from a very balanced place and since you're still you're connected and you are still you're not reacting out of chaos out of your mind you're operating from the heart time slows down and stretches it dilates space opens up and it gives you an opportunity to make intelligent decisions and choices because you're guided continuously all decisions you're making ultimately is not yours you're guided through it but you can see the way you're reacting to things that you're buying time for yourself to dodge the bullet or to react to a situation intelligently when others they stumble and they're reacting to it from chaos and in this connection that you have you want to take time off you want to be alone away from the noise away from the pollution the noise pollution and come back to your center come back to the love and the more you come back to this place the more powerful you become your body your mind mechanism that is here starts to emanate light comfort love harmony to its surrounding so you become a beacon of comfort and love and light and clarity wherever you go you go to the whole food market to do shopping that goes with you people don't know why they're smiling at you people don't know why you're comforting them you go to see your family they come down and they mellow down anything you touch and you come across is affected by your presence 
because you're completely connected to the love and the presence. And you don't forget the truth of who you are. And you're surrendered to the God's will. So you don't operate from fear. You're surrendered. You're a sannyasin. You're a shaman. You are a devotee of Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul. Take me. Break me. Remake me. Do whatever you want to do. I am yours. I'm dedicated to you. What an amazing time, what a great opportunity, what a golden opportunity by Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul, that is forcing us to look inside, to disconnect from the other world and to re-examine our spiritual values to examine the truth of who we are, to take refuge to the, in the inner world and to find comfort inside ourselves and discover our power. This is a blessing. This is not a curse. This is a universal purification that existence has decided to, to purify, to clean up, and to force us to look inside. Because anything outside you want to hang on to is going to crumble and fall apart. So you're forced to look inside. And in that, you may discover the treasures, the hidden gems, that been hiding and waiting for you all your life to be discovered. And that is freedom, liberation. So cherish and welcome this situation that is happening since you have no choice and you can't do anything else except resisting it and suffering from it. And turn the poison into medicine Turn this situation into a journey inwards in search of yourself, in search of the truth of who you are. It's golden opportunity right now. The gates to heaven have opened up. This is the time of ascension to fifth dimension. It's happening right now for those who are open and they have the willingness to jump into it and are willing to let go of the ideas, all the ideas of the past that we have about how things should be. Letting them go and get naked and jump into this total surrender into our own divinity surrender into her majesty and let her majesty taking over your life this is the time tomorrow i'm having a uh, a long distance uh healing event i'm teaching uh Long distance healing, it's going to be, I think it's two hours or two and a half hours. I, I need to look at my website. Um, 
is from 10 to 12, 10 o'clock in the morning here, California time to 12. So it should be from 7 to 9 p.m. Uh, in Europe. And uh, you're welcome to join in. Uh, you can go to my website, zaratustra.tv. It's my website, www.zaratustra.tv, and you can register there. And uh, it's best if you have, if you can have a partner, someone to work with, if you have someone in, in the household. If not, maybe you can organize with a friend of yours. Uh, over the phone later on we can you can I can show you how you can do healing on someone from distant uh, if you have someone stand by and uh, who's not in your household and you can work on them and then I'm going to show you how you do it and it's very amazing because when you contact them they're going to feel it very strongly that you were working on them so I'm going to be teaching that uh, tomorrow. And uh, I don't have any more events. I'm planning on having a uh, special event, uh, Ascension to Fifth Dimension, I think in two weeks. I need to put it down and I will make an announcement. So it's probably going to be a weekend workshop, um, not this coming weekend, the weekend after. So stay tuned. And also the uh, next week, we're going to have the next Academy, same time. Feel free to join me. Uh, those of you who have come through our system, Zoom, through our website, we will send you the recording of this Academy, of this event. It's also going to in order to, to watch the previous uh, recordings, you can go to my YouTube channel, Zaratustra 5D, and you will see all the Academy's recordings. Um, you can go to my website, to our archive, as well as if you want to hear to the audio section of this, I have my podcast, Zaratustra 5D. Feel free to contact me. If you want to email me, you can email me at info at zaratustra.tv or come on our Facebook pages and connect with us through that. I look forward to seeing you next week. Stay in your heart. Stay in the love. Bring your attention here. Remember who you are. Let the love rule your life and take over fear, worry, and anxiety. And know that when you're here, you're healing the planet. You're not being irresponsible by being happy and being in love. You're actually doing a service to humanity because love is what heals. Namaste.